Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. I seem to remember someone asking for an antimatter video like a year ago. Huh, that was a long time ago. So what makes animator so special anyway? I don't know. Let's ask Anti-Nick. Why do I look like this? Because you're made of antimatter? You do realize that antimatter doesn't look any different than normal matter, right? Your atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Mine are made of antiprotons, antineutrons, and antielectrons, or positrons. But they both behave the same way, and they both emit the same kinds of light. So it's actually very difficult to tell a normal atom apart from an anti-atom. So it looked like this. Hey, you're the guy I normally work with. Yep. No wonder you never touch me. Okay, calling it antimatter makes it sound like some exotic kind of matter. But it really isn't. Of course, then you might be wondering, why can't I touch him? Because we annihilate each other. But what exactly does that mean, and why does it happen? To understand this, we need to accept something else. There are a lot of particles. I mean, look at this list of baryons. And this list of mesons. How many ways they interact would be an even bigger list. But there are some rules that need to be followed. They're called conservation laws, and they're really important. Anyway, let's look at some examples. When an electron comes close to another electron, they push each other away because light charges repel. And that's not very exciting. If an electron and a proton come close, then they'll be drawn together, because opposites attract. But they'll just form a hydrogen atom, which isn't very exciting either. Sticking with opposites, though, an electron has a negative one charge, and an up quark has a positive two-thirds charge. If they come together, they'll actually cease to exist and make two new particles, a down quark and a neutrino. And they're not even antiparticles. So what happens if two antiparticles, like an electron and a positron, come together? They cease to exist, too. But since their charges are perfectly opposite, negative one and positive one, they have to make something neutral. And the easiest neutral thing to make is a photon, the particle of light. That's all antimatter really is. Their opposite properties cancel each other in the interaction, which leaves you with a whole lot of zero values. It's mostly just a coincidence. I mean, some particles are their own antiparticles. Like the humans we are, we impose our preconceived notions on it. So wait, why aren't all people made of antimatter like me? Yeah, I guess that's kind of weird, isn't it? So I guess there's one thing that makes antimatter special. There isn't that much of it. And whenever we make it, it doesn't last very long because it finds a partner and makes a photon. So why isn't the universe made entirely of photons? Way back at the beginning, the universe was chock full of photons. Those photons occasionally made quark-anti-quark -quark pairs. But like usual, they didn't last very long before recombining. Eventually, things cooled off enough for those pairs to separate and combine in other ways to form things like protons and antiprotons. But that should have made an equal number of each. And they should have all annihilated by now. So what gives? Well, we're not sure, but we're hoping the Large Hadron Collider will answer it for us. And we do have a few ideas. Some think the early universe might have allowed conservation law violations, which makes me uncomfortable. Others think that antimatter might decay faster than normal matter, but then we're making it sound special again. The one I like the best? There's still an equal amount of matter in antimatter. But the super fast expansion of the early universe separated it. That means some of the galaxies we see out there could actually be made entirely of antimatter. How cool is that? So do you think there are any antimatter galaxies out there? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about what antimatter is and how we discovered it, you should go over to the Super Enzyme Justice League and check out their video. I hosted it. They also helped out with the graphics in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.